Hey guys, how y'all doing? I'm here to give you guys a recap on the new chapter of the Natsu no Taizai, or you, you could call it the 7 Deadly Sins, on chapter 280. Now, this chapter right here, oh man, that ending right there. I'll get to that just a moment, okay? Let's just get starting from the very beginning to the very end. Okay, let's see here. Um, First page right there, pretty cool, seeing Helbrum, Oslo, and Galaxinia. Okay, the other pages. Going to the scene where Oslo sacrificed himself and now he's into a burnt crisp. We have to with that, like, um, King ends up seeing Oslo burnt up, burnt up and killed while Dien is also in pain. Uh, King is weeping in great grief saying, I never wanted this to happen. Why did you do something like this? Even right now, Hawk is also in grief by saying, It's obvious he wants to protect you, protect you, his precious king. And we see to it that Mal is still making his attack and using the light jewel of love, you know? And ends up striking towards um, King, Hawk, Gother, Deanne, Elizabeth. And Deanne ends up using an ability of her holy armament, the Gideon Warhammer. We see to it that, um, thanks... Thanks to the curse that Elizabeth managed to get rid of, we have to it that um, Eliz that Deanne's holy armament special trait is known as a lightning wrong rod. Anything that strikes at it will usually receive will receive directly into the earth. Hawk asks, "Why didn't you use that back then? Why didn't you use that even once until now?" Elizabeth explains that if the magic is redirected into the earth, then that means the creatures that lives on the creatures that lives of the creatures that make their home within it, as well as Earth itself, would end up getting hurt. So, there is a backlash between this attack. It will act as a lightning rod to take all the damage, but it will go into the, the go into Earth itself. For example, it's like, for example, if a fire, fire if a thunder strike that Mal launched right now goes into Gideon, it will have its attack go go directly there, but it'll go inside the ground or something, you know? And end up destroying something inside of it. That's why Deanne says she never wanted to use this ability in the first place, but because since we're on a floating island and it's not into Earth, it should be okay, but it's... But this floating island is about to be destroyed because one more attack, it will, the island will start to crumble and without a doubt, it will be taken apart. So Mal ends up launching another attack, which is the same attack he's using, Light Jewel of Love, you know? <clears throat> and we see to it that, um, that the island does collapse and everyone is falling. Elizabeth, on the other hand, ends up having to save Deanne from falling right now, and, she, and Elizabeth is, is trying to, like, um, hold, is trying to hold Deanne as best as she can with four of her wings. And we see to it that, um, Hawk is trying to save King himself, you know? And we have to it that Gother's on Hawk's body, and we have to it that Elizabeth can only look at, look at Deria's body in sorrow while it falls down to the ground. And we see to it that Hawk can't really see anywhere and tries to find King. And we see to it King, who's falling down, is ends up having negative thoughts in his mind. He goes like, what the hell is wrong with me? A fairy king falling to his death out of the sky? This must be a very bad joke. And King apologizes to Meliodas for having to fail to protect Deanne. And he remembers how Meliodas calls King a, a splendid king, but he called himself a worthless king. And we have to it that Oslo says, Don't die, your majesty. And Helbrim's like, You better make Deanne happy. You, bet you hear me? And King having negative thoughts, saying, Oslo, Hellbrand, regardless of how many times I protected by you guys, I wasn't able to protect you. Wasn't able to protect you. Please forgive me. And Galaxinia tells King, and he ends up having that um, same thought of Galaxinia telling King, you know, like, once you sprout your rings, etc., you will be the strongest fairy king there is, you know? Of course, like, King says you're overestimating him. And he remembers the promise that Deanne tells him by saying, King, I've always loved you and I always will. Do you still love me? And we see to it that King regained his confidence and he knows he has to keep his promise. And therefore, that this time he'll protect her to the end and show her the man you are, Holly Quinn. And we see to it that the silence commandment is starting to crumble. And now it is, his, it now is the time to prove your royal majesty and prove who the hell you really are. And we see to it that... Um, 
Deanne tells Elizabeth, you understand we're losing altitude, right? Just forget about me and escape yourself. But Elizabeth refuses to do so. And we have to it that Deanne's like, if you keep this up, you'll tire yourself out possibly. But Deanne could only yell at, scream at Elizabeth because Mal is right behind her. And before he could even do anything to her or even grab her, which I go, like, you filthy mongrel, don't you dare put your hands on her, you disgusting mutt. But all of a sudden, he gets hit by something really hard. And we see to it that King tells Deanne and Elizabeth that everything will be alright. I'll finish this once and for all. Even right now, King and Deanne can only... I mean, Deanne and Elizabeth can only stare in awe of King's new transformation. And as Galaxinia says to King, Once you fully grow your wings, you will be the strongest fairy king of all of history. And we see a picture where King has his wings sprout out fully, but his hairstyle is a little funny. No, I'm serious. If you guys read the chapter, or if you, etc., you will see that his hair is totally long, but... <laughs> it's just too funny, you know? I mean, right now, a lot of people are saying King has finally gained the power up and he finally sprouted his wings. But his freaking hair is ridiculous. No, I'm serious. Like, every time I looked at this, every time I look at that picture, it was so hilarious. I mean, King is really nice in terms of his wings, man. His power must have grew tremendously. But in terms of his hair, dude, it's just hilarious. Oh my gosh, even everyone says like, <laughs> even right now, everyone is saying that, you know what, King has a splendid power, but he's cursed with, with funny, terrible hair. <laughs> no, it was really hard for me <sighs> not to, to not laugh, okay? I'm serious. Anyways, King is ready to fight back against Mel, alright? Um, simple short summary without a lot of detail. Oslo sacrificed himself for King while Mal ends up launching an attack thanks to Deanne's weapon, the Gideon, ends up directing the attack on the earth or on the island that they're on. And because the two shots destroyed the island, they end up falling, Elizabeth saving Deanne from falling, King having to have negative thoughts but ends up ends up making remembering his promise and wanting to be with Deanne ends up ends up transforming, you know? Having fully sprouted his wings. And having a new hairstyle, which is really funny. He ends up saving Elizabeth from Mal, who was going to hurt her or even grab her. Which I'm really glad King stopped him, because Mal, you filthy mongrel. Don't you dare lay your hands on Elizabeth, you hear me? <sighs> Looking forward to the next chapter. I don't know, honestly, I do not know if it will be enough for King to actually take on Mal. Especially, like, where Mal is right now, because... Think about it. I mean, Mal has four commandments absorbed into his body, and his power is over 200 plus thousand. <laughs> so, I don't know if King might have a chance against him, but one thing for sure is like he will put up a much better fight. That is for sure. Etc. Although, him defeating Mal would be surprising, but we'll have to find out. So, until then, I will see you guys in my next video. So, I'm off the zone, people. Have a good day, and I'll see you guys next time, alright? Peace out. Bye-bye.